I love sitting with an old tree like this and imagining what it's lived through and how the world has changed around it. I also imagine its future. What will it witness over the next 100 years or so? How will it hold up as it feels the climate around it change? All over the world, policymakers and communities are planning for a climate change impacted future, figuring out what needs to happen to make sure we have our needs met. And cities with healthy green spaces are a very strong need. So what does Melbourne's future climate look like at this point? Really good question. And a lot of that depends on what we do in mitigation works maybe one, two, but if it's three degrees warmer, we're really looking at something like modern day Dubbo. Claire Hart is the manager of horticulture here at the Melbourne Gardens, and is one of the many people ensuring the collections adapt fast enough to survive into the future. So Claire, long-term planning is a hallmark of a good public garden, but with a rapidly changing climate, I imagine that planning looks a bit different to what it did 10, 20 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And say 10, 20 years ago, we were in the Millennium Drought. So the Millennium Drought from 1997 to 2009, we did a whole lot of savings uh, and changing on our water management here and saved about 40% use of potable water with great outcome. But from that, it was, ooh, okay, what are the greater implications for our plants or our living collections from climate change? we commissioned a report with the University of Melbourne so that we could understand what was happening in our plants or our living collections. This graphic from their climate risk assessment shows all the plants in the Melbourne garden with the red showing the most at risk. The data revealed that in most scenarios, many of the plants grown today would struggle in the future. What will the gardens look like in a hundred years? Well, because we are transitioning a lot of our species now, we will still have oaks and eucalypts and our beautiful fig trees and palms as well. So what we're essentially doing is changing now in order to stay the same. Uh, great example is this white oak here. So a tree that we lost in 2019 um, came from a cooler climate. So now we've replaced it with three climate suited plants that we know will be suitable for that warmer, drier climate of 2070 and 2090. The Royal Botanic Gardens Victoria created a climate alliance so that botanic gardens all over the world can help each other and solve these problems together. So this plant is Cleanthus pernicious albus, a really special plant. It was gifted to us by our New Zealand colleagues to grow here important because we're growing it in warmer conditions than it exists in back in New Zealand. So a great way for them to see just how fabulous it is flourishing. So they know that in those warmer climates, when they do experience more of a warmer temperature, that it's going to flourish. Uh, another important thing about it is that, as you can see, it's got a whole lot of seed in it. So we're duplicating this plant over here. If they need the seed, we can also send it back. Not all of the collections in the Melbourne Gardens will be impacted equally. Kind of Amy Downey is the curator of what's known as the Grey Garden, a diverse group of plantings on one of the garden's hottest, most exposed slopes. From cactus to palms to cerastium, you can have anything here and they're all different, but they all have this one thing, which is their grey foliage, which connects them. And the thing with grey foliage plants is they're able to survive in really hot, harsh conditions with not a lot of water. So some plants may have fine hairs on their leaves or another one like this Eucalyptus macrocarpa has a powdery waxy coating to help it to reflect the sun and retain more water. How do you see this garden changing into the future? So we're hoping that some of the plants that we've recently planted, one being this beautiful Bismarckia nobilis behind us, will eventually grow up and be the feature. Another one includes a Quercus anglemanii, which one of our horticulturists here actually got the Quercus as an acorn from the LA Arboretum. And so we're hoping that it's gonna grow up and kind of replace the other trees that are currently here at the moment and be the main tree of the collection. 
Amy's taking me to see a tree that she planted just a few years ago, back when she was an apprentice here. It's a eucalyptus grandis from southern Queensland. So this tree is going to grow to be a big, beautiful eucalyptus that's hopefully going to provide a little bit of shade for people spending time in the Lakeview shelter. And it's very climate match, so it's going to be here for a very long time. So what sort of a time frame are we looking at? Hopefully hundreds of years, 2090 and onwards. This is the level of work that you're planning. Mm -hmm. how, how does it make you feel to be projecting this far into the future on things you won't be around to see? Yeah, it feels really good because obviously we know about climate change and it can be a super intimidating, kind of scary, overwhelming thing to face. So seeing the positive things that we're doing here with our landscape succession plan and knowing that we're planting trees that are going to be here for the next generation fills you with a little bit of empowerment, I guess, and makes the future feel a little bit more bright. It's about making sure that the legacy we leave is there for my family, for your family, and for those future generations to enjoy not only what we see, the plants today, but be able to really immerse themselves amongst the canopy of the trees. That's what I want to see for that future. If you want to check your trees for their climate resilience, there's a version of the climate assessment tool that home gardeners can use. The details are on our website. Here in the gardens and all over the world, people are planning and planting for a future with beauty, biodiversity and good trees to sit beneath.